All right, so tell us your name and what this documentary is going to be about. Hair relaxers are used by millions of black women, but now there is new research that shows that the chemicals used in the product may be dangerous to female health. My name is Lenika Hill, and this documentary is about my hair journey. My hair journey is really significant and prominent in my life. Uh, it all started when I was born. I was given a relaxer when I was a child. That's the story that I'm told, that I got my first relaxer at the age of two. If you know anything about relaxers, that is a terrible thing to happen to a two-year-old. Those chemicals are so harsh and it just started my hair journey. Because I got a relaxer so young, I didn't know that there was any other way to wear my hair. And it just became normal to keep my hair relaxed. There's fear that repeated use can trigger early puberty in young girls and could be linked to uterine fibroids. So we are about to go to the beauty supply store so I can give you guys a glimpse into what I used to go through. During my relaxed days, a, relax, a relaxer had three very important steps. So my mom will always start with putting either some grease or some petroleum jelly on my edges around the perimeter of my hair and on like some parts of my scalp to keep my scalp from being damaged. <laughs> um, and then after you would protect the hair with the petroleum, then you will move on to the relaxer part. I remember being in my grandmother's kitchen and she had given me a relaxer. She had put it in my hair and you have to let a relaxer process on the scalp. So I just remember my hair, my scalp was itching. It felt like a million and five ants were just crawling all over my hair. And I just remember screaming at the top of my lungs and begging my grandmother to take the relaxer off, to wash it out, to please get this off of my head. I was so young. And so, like I said, I know it was very serious because I remember it. And all she wanted me to do was just wait a little bit longer so that it could work and I had to endure. And I was just screaming and trying to get to the sink without, without her telling me to. Eventually she washed it off and the warm water just hit my head and it felt like heaven. <laughs> it felt like, oh my gosh, thank you. It was such a relief. And um, that happened numerous times throughout my hair journey as a kid growing up getting, you know, consistent relaxers and stuff. I remember, certain instances where a relaxer will be left on too long in hopes of it working even better or straightening my hair even more. And I would end up with sores on my scalp. And those things were super painful. Yeah, I used to wear my hair with curly weaves, um, big hair, big curly hair, big wavy hair. I enjoy stuff like that. It would look something like this. I love the messy looking hairstyle. It was one of my favorites. I got into high school continuing to wear relaxers, but I also introduced weaves into my hair and braids and you know, using synthetic hair to create braids in my hair and then using weaves to give myself longer or thicker hair because relaxers had made my hair so thin and I had no body, no volume, nothing. It was just flat to me and I was not enjoying it. So I used extra hair to make my hair feel better or make me feel better about my hair. People are spending more money on natural hair care products while the sales of chemical relaxers are declining. It's part of the natural hair movement that encourages people with African ancestry to celebrate their curly hair texture. 
for my kids, I've always tried to show them that I have fun with my hair. I enjoy my hair. I, en I enjoy chopping it. I enjoy dyeing it. Yumi believes yeah. not using chemical relaxers in her hair taught her children to love theirs. In 2009, chemical relaxers accounted for 60% of the multicultural hair category. Now that market share is down to 3%. After high school, about a year after high school, I remember seeing that there was this new movement happening when it came to hair. It was called a natural hair movement. And I had no idea of what that was, but the more I looked into it, I started to see women that looked like me with thick hair, long hair, curly hair. Loving your hair is loving an extension of you. Akoya Banks, the founder of Love the Hair You Wear, organizes annual events like this one, providing professional consults and products to help in the natural hair care journey. I was obsessed with watching videos on YouTube about natural hair and seeing the girls twist their hair and when they take the twists out it's just a huge beautiful shiny bouncy afro and i wanted that for myself but i didn't think that i could and then one day i just woke up and i got some scissors and i cut all of my hair off my head <laughs> i cut my hair with scissors in the bathroom mirror and I remember my mom coming home <laughs> and I ran down the steps and I was like mom look what I did and she literally went pale in the face <laughs> I had no hair but I felt so beautiful I had the shortest hair that I had ever had but it was thick and I had curls and it wasn't like thin and boring and dead. It was alive and bouncy because I only cut off the straight ends. I didn't cut off the new growth. I cut off just the straight hair and I left that thickness that had grew in over those months that I didn't get a relaxer. So that started my natural hair journey. But then I got bored and I dyed my hair blonde. Big mistake, big mistake because I did not have the discipline to keep my hair healthy while blonde. Blonde naturally damages your hair to some extent and then if you're not moisturizing it and keeping it up, yeah, you're in for a, a wild ride with your hair. <laughs> so I dyed my hair blonde and I wasn't taking care of it, so it started to get dry and brittle, and it was hard for me to maneuver, and it wasn't as lush and pretty as it was when I first cut it off. But I navigated, you know, I figured it out. I introduced some weaves here and there while I was trying to figure it out, but I didn't get a relaxer. And I just let my hair keep growing. Eventually, I cut the dead hair off, and it continued to grow naturally. My curls, my curls continued to get thicker. My hair continued to get longer. And about four years later, I had the longest hair I'd ever had. And it was beautiful. It was thick. It was long. And I was so in love with my hair. And then I got bored. <laughs> and I cut my hair off again. And I got another relaxer, a dreadful relaxer. The thing that I hated the most, I got it again. And looking back, I understand it was just because I needed change. I needed something drastic. I was going through some things in my life and I just needed to do something different so I could feel good about myself again. Eventually, I stopped getting the pixie cut like maintained and keeping it cut really clean. And so I started to let it grow out. And growing your hair out from a pixie cut is it's so hard. It's so hard. So I had to introduce weaves and braids back into my hair. And I just did that for a while. I was having a good time with it, but it started to feel like a prison the second time around. I wasn't enjoying it as much. It started to feel like as soon as I took my hair out from one style, as soon as I took the braids out, as soon as I took a weave out, the same day I had to figure out what weave, what braids I was gonna put in next and it started to feel like a prison. I wanted to just be able to wake up and go. I wanted to just be able to have my own hair on my head and not have to worry about buying hair, fake hair, buying a whole bunch of products and just all these things and it started to really make me feel stuck. So these have to get like five packs of these, maybe. Depends on how many you want, but 
Yes, I will wear this style. That was my go-to. I had heard a lot of people tell me all throughout the years, you should grow locks, you will look great with locks because I wore faux locks. I wore fake, fake locks, pretend locks. And I loved that style. It was like the hairstyle that I would go back to the most. And people had always told me, you should grow your own, you should have your own. And when I started to feel bound by even the fake locks and the weaves and the braids, that's when I started to, started to, I started to really flirt with the idea like, I could grow my own hair. I'm spending all this time wearing all these other styles when I can just devote time to letting my hair grow out. I was getting to the end of that style and I remember taking them out one day in January of 2019. I took them out, I washed my hair, and I remember standing in the mirror looking at my hair, my natural hair, and I was just like, what am I gonna do next? Like, do I really have to go out and buy some more hair to braid my hair up again? Do I really have to figure out a weave or a wig to wear next? And I'm like, I really don't wanna do that anymore. So until I figured it out, I just put some finger coils in my hair. I used my finger to coil my hair up just to get it out the way and something miraculous started happening within those days that I was wearing those coils. It was about four days that I wore them. And what happened was I started to realize that I was waking up in the morning, washing my face, showering, doing all those things and not worried about my hair. Let's get it. Y'all wanna see somebody transform? <laughs> And so then I realized, huh, you can leave these coils in and start your locks. Just do it now, you're already here. You already took the first step. The style is in your head. All you're responsible for is never taking these coils out. And so I left them in. And I'm about to be three years locked in January of 2022. And it's been the best journey I've ever taken. It's been the most amazing thing I've ever done for my hair. My hair has shown me new sides of itself that I didn't even know was possible. My hair is the longest it's ever been and it's still not done growing because locks can grow to the floor and beyond. And I'm nowhere near that length. So I'm still at the beginning of my lock journey and I'm still enjoying it so much. And I haven't regretted it since that day that I decided. is I'm going to drench my hair. My hair needs to be soaked. And I say soaked and I emphasize that because the water has to penetrate the locks. Each lock is its own separate system of tangled hair. So the water has to get through each one. So drenching the hair with water. You know, I don't use a lot of products, but if I'm using a lot of gel, if I'm trying to lot of new styles and I end up over using product, I'll do it like every other week, but once a month minimum. So I think that if you're that person that you just can't stop thinking about it, you're obsessed with it, you love seeing people with the locks, you, you gravitate toward that look, I think you should just try it. Having locks is the best thing I've ever done for my hair. I don't regret it. I fall in love with my hair even more every single day. And I'm not exaggerating. I really do love my hair more and more every single day. And throughout my whole hair journey, from, from, the, from the relaxers to the weaves to the braids to the dying disasters <laughs> and more, to now having locks and loving it the most loving it more than I've loved any other hairstyle, I'm still not gonna let myself be bound to even this hairstyle. I'm giving myself a timeline, I'm giving myself a runway, and I'm making a commitment. But if I decide that I wanna change, I've learned through life that it is okay to just change. <laughs>